let's look at the key elements of the director transition cycle. So first up, we've got planning. Rebecca and Fee, how should boards start planning? As I've just mentioned, plan is probably the most important part of that cycle. And as the saying goes, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So when thinking about that in mind, I want to give some real practical kind of insights around what my experience has been working with boards for 20 years is, when well, you've got director's terms coming up on the board, look at who, when the next term is up and who you're going to lose a few directors, it's going to be with a short period of time. Are you going to have continuity on the board? If you have done some board performance reviews and you've got a board skills matrix in place, what's the maturity of the board? Is it a mix? Have you got mature or more seasoned directors in there as well? And also take into account your short-term and your long-term strategy of the school. What's planned for the next three to five years? What do you want your board to look like? What kind of current skills do you have on your board and what skills you're missing and what skills you're going to need more of given the strategic plan that the board are going to be overseeing and monitoring for the next three to five years. This is where your board skills matrix, if you don't have one in place, it's really an important governance document to get in place. And it's a really good tool to use as a self-reflection tool for your board, but also in the planning process when you're trying to do succession planning and recruitment for your board. Then I think with those key skills and attributes in mind, you would get a really good sense of what your non-negotiables for your new directors are and what skills you actually need to bring onto the board. And then from there, you would get an idea of your ideal candidate. And then you would start your more holistic process around your recruitment and what that looks like. Okay, excellent. And so Fee, what else should they think of? Are there other gaps to plan for? No, I think the skills matrix part is essential. But what we're finding and what I've found from experience over the last many years of working with and looking at their skills and doing this planning is that we don't think broadly enough. We got stuck in that traditional view that we had to have a skills-based force, had to fundamentally have professional directors. And we immediately assumed that meant lawyers and accountants. But there's a very different view now that we need a much broader set of skills. One, we must have directors who actually understand the sector they're in. So they must understand the education system. Two, professional skills is incredibly important, but it's not everything. And three, we must have contemporary skills. And very much nowadays, they are around the environmental social governance skills. They are around culture, being a member of the community, being a past student and so on. But we're also including now other things about our directors that add to our diversity around the boardroom table, things such as their leadership styles, their behavioural styles, their learning styles. And do you actually, as a director, represent a minority group in our community? So I think the key is, as well as the skills matrix, is that diversity of the kind of skills that really allow us to have the right conversations around the board.